Hello everybody, this is Paul Spires again, a realtor in southwest Virginia in the Botetourt County and the Shenandoah Valley area. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what's really popular these days is a so-called mini farm or a gentleman's farm or a hobby farm or prepping place or homestead. There's a lot of names for it, but basically the idea is something that was very common, especially in this part of the country, in the early days of this country where people just literally lived off the land. They had to, they had no choice, so it was hunting and maybe they had a cow or a few domestic animals and usually it would have a dog or something. And they literally had to live off the land in every possible way to survive. So that concept of a little homestead is very, very popular and it's a very, very enduring concept and it's actually very popular around the world because there are places in the world right now that if they saw what we do with a yard in America, they'd be like, what are you, crazy? You got like an acre of land, you could be growing a year's worth of food right there. <clears throat> See, so <clears throat> it's a matter of what you use land for and getting the maximum value. And a lot of times today, if you see these developments, uh, I mean, they really aren't using the land for any, I mean, you might take a beautiful piece of land that has gray soil or maybe a nice forest or hardwoods, and then they just chop them all down, they build some houses there, and... And that's it. I mean, it's no longer really great productive land. Now, the fortunate thing is in Virginia, there's an awful lot of rural land. I live in a rural area. I've lived here in this part of Virginia for five years. I lived in Ohio for a couple of years. I lived in upstate New York for a very long time. Very, very rural area. Uh, I been, lived in Pennsylvania. So there's a tradition in America of people just using a property to provide some of the sustenance for themselves or some of the some utility not just a place where you park your car on the street and you go into your door and that's it that's not that's not the real concept of real family homestead that <clears throat> this country was founded on and that is very common in many parts of the world today even so <clears throat> the thing is there's a lot of young people today who would like to move out the country and Bless your heart, my older son is one of them, and they bought a place in Pensacola, Florida with an acre of land, and and uh, they had some recreation land out in Arkansas that they use now and then. And there's a lot of people who want that noble idea, say, let's go live close to land and be, quote, off the grid and so on. So I try to talk to people about that because there's a lot of things that you don't know about, especially if you're a young person and you've never lived out in the rural area. There's things I've mentioned in other videos about the septic and well and zoning and and the type of land and so on. So I want to talk a little bit about the so-called mini farm. And I'm a very, very strong advocate of people getting back to land. That's one reason I like to live out in the country myself. And I personally live on a has a small house and a shed and a little barn and and uh, you know four acres and a stream down at the bottom and so it it has a very delightful nearby street and and there's no through traffic it's a dead end road and there's just a lot of uh, pleasant scenery around and animals and so on so there's a lot of that in Virginia and if you ever if you hear this video and you want to contact me I can help you scout for something and and see what's appropriate for your particular needs now. One of the issues that you get in out here is that there's a lot of people who are living on these old homesteads. It's been in the family for a long time and maybe it could be quite a large tract. I mean, there might be a couple hundred acres and now there's some Angus cows walking around or maybe they're, every single year they plant sunflowers or corn or soybeans or something like that. So this type of property that's an active farm, they don't sell very often actually. And for example, I came across one that was 38 acres and uh, the guy was wanting to sell it and it's fairly expensive so that's another issue you get into because <clears throat> let's say you want to buy one and you find one finally and the guy says okay I'd love to sell these 20-30 acres and it's got a barn and all these things and then you say well what's the price of that well you know it's it could be quite expensive you see so one way to go into it is thinking okay well uh, if I buy a large chunk and I pay up a big chunk of money up front, then maybe I can subdivide it or maybe I can make that land start to immediately pay for itself somehow, some way. And one of the ways that people can do it if you buy a chunk of land, it's very, very common. If, I, if someone who owns a piece of new, property in New Jersey, I had one deal like that, a guy who, 
he was a neighbor to this lot I was selling to this company, this this couple, and he owned this property. He lived in New Jersey, and and he had rented it out or leased it out to a local farmer for his cattle for many, many, many years. So really, the guy hardly ever came there, and basically it was great farmland, but it was all inhabited by cattle. So. It can be very expensive to get into a land situation where you have like a large barn or some other kind of structure as well as a house. And it may be that the house is in great condition, but it may be that the barn and the sheds or something else need, need some work. So there's a few ways to get into like a mini kind of farm thing. One is to buy some land raw and convert it and start building your own structures there. Um, in these days, because there aren't very many mini farms in small places like that for sale in the first place, then that is an opportunity that people can do. Now, some people are very creative and they can build and they have friends and so on, so that it's no problem. So they can they can build on a piece of property, but you got to make sure you get a one that was suitable for that particular use. And that means it might have to need some good soil and certainly some water and some sunlight for a garden and Essentially what you want in a homestead type of property is you want multi-purpose land. See, when you look at the suburbs and you see, well, this, they just cut up an acre or two, maybe even just a whole couple of acres, but still not very <clears throat> amenable to a real homestead because there's many developments that have zoning codes and local you know, deed codes that will say, well, you can't have a cow on this property. I'm sorry, you can't have chickens. I mean, you, you can live here and it's a nice two-acre land, but... You can have a dog and a cat, but no chickens or certainly no pigs and stuff like that. So you get into that situation. So if you really want a real homestead that has the opportunity to raise domestic animals, you need to get into the zoning area out in the rural areas of this country. And Virginia, like I said, it has a lot of open land and a lot. It's very amenable to agriculture and various kinds of, uh, say, cattle and, and sheep and so on. So... Now, how are you going to find a place like that? Well, um, one of the things that I do as a scout, I, I walk around or drive around and I see properties and sometimes I'll see something interesting and go look it up on a tax map on, online and I'll find out what's going on. Well, who is that person? Maybe, they own, maybe they're an out-of-town owner. So that's one way to find somebody who lives out of town and has this piece of land that you'd like to buy. And you make a deal with them and you contact them and a lot of times you need an agent in between you because it helps have a negotiation and someone who looks out for you and can determine whether it's a good piece of land or not and what the, the value can be. So I have to say that unfortunately small par parcels like say one acre parcels out in the rural areas are pretty rare because that's what you usually get when it's, you're in a small town. In a lot of little small towns, you'll find one acre parcels, but especially the older towns, um, they haven't been chopped up. You'll likely find, you know, not very far from the center of town, there's still quite a bit large farmland and big parcels right there. And uh, so one way is to go in, like I did another video about subdividing, you can go in buying a bigger piece of land and with the strategy, you say, okay, I'm going to cut this land in two pieces or maybe my family or... I'll, I'll divide it and then I can take an equity, I can sell that piece and get some cash to improve the one I'm on. So that's another way of going about it. You may have to um, <clears throat> build a, a, your own farmette kind of thing, like I said. Now, another way is to go into, say, you find like a house. That's a nice house that you would live in and it just happens to have like five or six acres. And they're not really a farm property, but there's a decent little house there. So you won't have to add a house to the property but you can add like a barn or some other kind of structure. There's a lot of that in the countryside where someone has a, maybe it'll be a ranch house or <clears throat> a simple farmhouse or something from 50, 60 years ago and sitting there and it's not really set up as a farm ad or mini farm kind of thing, but you can do that, but you already start with the, with the home. Another way is to find a piece of property that had like say, let's say it was a... <clears throat> I talk about distressed property, you find something that has an old barn on it and, and you know, the, you make a deal, you find out who the owner is and say, look, you know, I see your barn is running down and 
maybe you'd like to sell me 10 acres of this piece of land and you know I'll do I'll do something with that barn and you can cash out and then you can have the barn or the shed or some other feature on the land. Now when you buy a farm mat you definitely want to make sure there's good water there because without water you got no domestic animals and everything so it gets really complicated but fortunately in Virginia there's a lot of property a lot of streams that flow so water is really not much of an issue in Virginia in most places <clears throat> um, but as far as getting a pond you definitely want to have some level land and sometimes you'll need permissions from a town or zoning to build any kind of a real significant pond on a, on a stream so I think I've made this video almost long enough about 10-11 minutes please answer ask me questions and contact me I also do aerial photography of the area I drive around, I'm a scout, I look at all these roads, see this map behind me. I've been on a lot of roads and that's even in a small portion of Virginia actually, Shenandoah Valley. So I know a lot about this area and I lived in a rural area for a long time and there's a lot of different issues that come up but I find it a great pleasure to live out in a rural area but you want to use some strategy and thinking about exactly where you, you settle. Okay, thanks a lot for listening.